Greeting everyone, before this video start, I just wanted to let you know that for some reason, YouTube has decided that my channel is no longer eligible for the monetization program which means that I no longer make profit of my videos. I will still make recaps because this is what I enjoy doing, and by the comments you guys have been leaving lately it seems that you like watching them as well. As you know, I have a Ko-Fi page as well as a merch store so if you like to show your support, link of the two websites will be down in the description. With that out the way, I hope you enjoy this video, and let's jump straight into the recap. In 2001, two years after Yashikage Kira's defeat, Koichi Hirose arrives in Naples, Italy at the request of Jotaro Kujo to obtain a skin sample from a young man Haruno Shiobana. Koichi ends up being scammed by Haruno, who now goes by the name of Giorno Giovanna. While escaping from Koichi, Giorno uses his stand gold experience, which allows him to transform inanimate objects into living organisms, to transform Koichi's luggage into a frog. Giorno then has an altercation with a gangster named Liki I Luca for operating on his turf. Luca attempts to bash Giorno's head in with a shovel, but instead strikes the frog, which results in Luca taking the damage and being knocked out. Later, Koichi catches up to Giorno and tries to restrain him with his stand echoes, only for Giorno to escape by using gold experience to create a tree that raises him to safety. Koichi reports his findings to Jotaro and learns that Giorno is Dio Brando's son. Giorno boards a cable car and encounters Bruno Bacciarati who suspects Giorno of harming Luca, who was later killed by his boss. Bacciarati brings out the power of his zipper generating stand, sticky fingers, to extract the truth from Giorno. In a flashback, it is revealed that Giorno, who was once abused by his stepfather and bullied by other kids, began being treated with respect after saving an injured gangster, giving him a reason to live. Back in the present, faced with Bacciarati's stand, sticky fingers, Giorno desperately uses gold experience to defend himself and learns his stand can cause a living person's senses to go berserk. Outmatched, Bacciarati creates a dimension-distorting zipper in an attempt to hide himself inside another person, but Giorno tracks him down by turning a tooth he had earlier punched out from Bacciarati's mouth into a fly that attempts to return to his body. Given the chance to finish Bacciarati off, Giorno decides against it and instead asks to join his organization. He reveals his goal to take down the organization's boss and rule over it himself so he may better the lives of the citizens of Naples. Bacciarati agrees to introduce Giorno into the Passione organization, but he has to be evaluated by Palpo, a morbidly obese capo. Giorno visits him in prison and realizes that he is a stand user. Palpo tasks him with keeping the flame on a cigarette lighter burning for 24 hours as a test of his trust. Giorno arrives back at his dorm with it but he is forced to evade Koichi, who has come looking for his passport. The lighter is accidentally doused by a janitor who easily reignites the it, however, this causes Palpo's stand Black Sabbath to appear as it grabs the janitor's soul and pierces it with an arrow to test if it is worthy. The janitor is killed, and Black Sabbath turns its attention to Giorno who after evading the attacks, deduces that the stand attacks those who witnessed the lighter being relit while staying in the shadows to avoid sunlight. Koichi is also targeted. As he had also witnessed the lighter and deduces that Black Sabbath is a remote type stand while recognizing its arrow as the same type that created his stand. Black Sabbath traps Giorno by reaching out from within the shadow of a tree and Koichi tries to restrain it by pinning it down, pushing him far enough down to contact the tree's roots. Giorno uses gold experience to wither the tree, exposing Black Sabbath to the sunlight and causing it to vanish. The next day, Giorno visits Palpo and is admitted into the Passione. However, angry that Palpo had killed the janitor, Giorno turns one of Palpo's guns into a banana, causing the capo to accidentally kill himself when he tries to eat it. Koichi respects Giorno's wishes not to inform Jotaro of what happened, keeping Giorno's plan secret and later, Bacciarati takes Giorno to meet the rest of his stand-wielding team. News of Palpo's apparent suicide reaches many Passione members, along with the suspicion that Bacciarati knows the location of Palpo's hidden fortune. Meanwhile, Giorno is introduced to Bacciarati's group, Leona Baccio, Narancia Gerga, Guido Mista, and Panicata Fugo. After learning of Palpo's death, Bacciarati takes his team on a yacht to the island of Capri to retrieve Palpo's fortune and attain the rank of capo. 
Narancia, Mista and Fugo mysteriously vanish, leading Bacciarati to suspect someone has sneaked onto the yacht and is targeting him for the fortune. Giorno deduces that the others are still alive and acts as bait to lure out the enemy stand, prompting Abaccio, who initially distrusted Giorno, to bring out his own stand. A flashback details Abaccio's past. He was once an honest police officer until his career ended when he accepted a bribe from a thug, who then went on to kill Abaccio's partner. He later joined Passione after being approached by Bacciarati. Back in the present, Abaccio uses his stand Moody Blues to replay the last five minutes of Narancia's actions. Abaccio and Bacciarati deduce that the enemy stand, Soft Machine, has the power to deflate opponents like balloons and pull them into small spaces. Abaccio suspects that there is one more mystery behind Soft Machine's power, and allows himself to be captured as well, leaving Bacciarati a trail of blood showing where the stand user is hiding. Bacciarati floods the yacht and causes it to sink, forcing the stand user, Mario Zucchero, to emerge. Zucchero is revealed to have been hiding inside a second yacht which he had deflated with his power and laid over the first. Bacciarati incapacitates Zucchero by unzipping his head from his body, rescuing the others in the process. Bacciarati's gang takes some delight in torturing information out of Zucchero despite little success. Abaccio then uses Moody Blue's replay to discover that Zucchero's partner is already waiting for their boat on Capri. Giorno takes Mista on ahead to the island to find Zucchero's partner before their boat arrives. With help from Giorno, Mista uses the power of his stand sex pistols, which creates six autonomous bullet-like beings that can redirect Mista's gunshots mid-flight, to locate Zucchero's partner named Sale. Sale escapes to a getaway truck, and Mista grabs on before it drives away. In a flashback, Mista is shown as a carefree young thug who discovered that bullets fired at him miss completely. Back on the island of Capri, Mista is hanging onto the truck traveling up a mountain and is confronted by Sale and his stand, Kraftwerk. Sale's stand allows him to affix objects and people in place, which enables him to stop a bullet fired by Mista from penetrating his skull. Mista then uses his sex pistols to knock Sale off the truck however. Sale catches up to Mista and hits him with one of his own bullets. Sale attempts to finish Mista off with one final bullet, but Mista has the sex pistols take control of it and split it in two, deflecting a fragment to push the bullet Sale had previously stopped further into his skull. Mista then has the truck driver return him to the marina where he enters the watch house with the bleeding Sale. Bacciarati's group are reunited on Capri and are approached by Pericolo, one of Passione's capos disguised as a janitor. Bacciarati hands over the treasure, which was hidden inside a urinal, and Pericolo names Bacciarati a capo in control of Palpo's turf. His first task is to protect Trishuna, daughter of Passione's mysterious boss, from a hitman team within the organization that has turned traitor and seeks to learn the boss's identity so they can depose him. Back in Naples, Formaggio, one of the traders, manages to locate Narancia while he is shopping for supplies. He engages Narancia and concludes that Bacciarati's group must be guarding Trish. Narancia tries to dispose of Formaggio with his miniature airplane stand Aerosmith, but Formaggio uses his own stand. Little feet to shrink himself and hide in Narancia's pocket. Narancia discovers that he is slowly shrinking due to a wound little feet had inflicted on him. When Formaggio prevents him from using a public telephone to call Bacciarati's group, Narancia realizes Formaggio is nearby. Narancia uses Aerosmith to relentlessly track Formaggio and forces him down into the sewer. In a flashback to two years earlier, the Hitman team realized that two of their members, Sorbet and Gelato, were missing after trying to discover the boss's identity. Formaggio found Gelato dead with a note reading, Punishment, and later the team was anonymously mailed frames holding Sorbet's dismembered remains. The group consequently abandoned their plans for advancement until they learned of Trish. Back in the present, Formaggio deduces that Aerosmith detects its targets by their CO2 emittance. Formaggio attempts to escape among a group of rats, only to become the target of Aerosmith yet again due to the heavy breathing of the rat he is riding. He survives an attack by reverting to his original size, as Aerosmith has also shrunk along with Narancia and its smaller bullets have little effect. 
A flashback shows that after Narancia's mother died from an eye infection and he ran away from home due to his father's neglect. Falling into a bad crowd, he was arrested after his friend framed him, then was abandoned by his friends after being released. He nearly died from the same eye infection that killed his mother, but he was rescued by Fugo and Bacciarati. Formaggio traps the miniature Narancia in a bottle with a spider to interrogate him on Trisha's whereabouts. However, Aerosmith had earlier riddled a car with bullets, and the car suddenly explodes, scorching Formaggio and returning Narancia to his normal size. Formaggio shrinks himself, using his own blood to extinguish the flames engulfing him, and attempts to escape under the smoke affecting Aerosmith's radar. However, Narancia causes more explosions, surrounding Formaggio with more fires and forcing him to reveal himself. The two have one final standoff, resulting in Narancia killing Formaggio. Back at the vineyard, Bucciarati receives instructions from the boss to travel to Pompeii and retrieve a key near a dog mosaic for a vehicle which can escort Trish to safety. Giorno, Fugo, and Abaccio arrive in Pompeii seeking the key. They come across a strange mirror and Fugo is suddenly dragged into a mirror world by Hitman team member Eluso and his stand, Man in the Mirror. Fugo summons his stand, Purple Haze, but it appears in the real world with Giorno and Abaccio instead of the mirror world where he is trapped. A flashback explains how Fugo's pent-up rage led to a violent incident that led him to be disowned by his family and for him to eventually join Bacciarati's group. As Purple Haze begins to emit a deadly virus from its fists, Fugo has it smash the mirror as a message for Giorno who remains determined to save Fugo, despite Abaccio's command that they find the key and flee. Abaccio attempts to retrieve the key, but Eluso uses a nearby piece of a mirror to draw him into the mirror world. Abaccio tricks Eluso into taking Moody Blues into the mirror, but the latter counterattacks, leaving half of Abaccio and Moody Blues in each world, rendering each powerless. In desperation, Abaccio cuts off his own hand, enabling Moody Blue's hand to grab and deliver the key to Giorno. However, rather than flee with the key, Giorno allows himself to be dragged into the mirror world by Eluso. Giorno reveals he had infected himself with Purple Haze's virus, and has now passed it on to Eluso. To save himself, Eluso escapes back into the real world, leaving his infected arm in the mirror world. However, Giorno had earlier used gold experience to turn a brick into a snake which tracks Eluso's position, enabling Fugo to follow and kill him with Purple Haze. As Eluso dies, Fugo, Abaccio and Giorno return to the real world, where Giorno uses the snake's antibodies to cure his own infection before tasking Fugo with treating Abaccio's wounds. Bacciarati's gang follows the key's instructions to drive to Naples railway station to find the vehicle it unlocks, and to use the vehicle to bring Trish to Venice. Meanwhile, two members of the Hitman team, Prosciutto and Pesci, arrive at the station to ambush Bacciarati's squad. Unable to unlock any keyholes he finds at the specified location written on the key, Bacciarati notices a land turtle named Coco Jumbo with a key-shaped indentation in its shell. He and his crew board the train with the turtle and insert the key into its shell. This activates its stand ability, Mr. President, which pulls them into a furnished room inside its body. When Prosciutto and Pesci board the train, they are unable to locate the others as Coco Jumbo is hiding under a chair, keeping Bacciarati's crew safe and in order to find them, Prosciutto activates his stand, the Grateful Dead, which spreads a gas throughout the train that causes everyone to rapidly age. Although the turtle is barely affected by the gas, Narancia, Fugo and Giorno quickly age. Giorno notices that Bacciarati, Mista, and Trish are aging slower than the others and seeing that they each have cool drinks, he deduces that the aging gas is less effective on those with cooler body temperatures. Mista exits the turtle to find the stand user, but when he tries to turn on the air conditioning to cool the room, he is immediately hooked by Pesci's fishing rod stand, Beach Boy, which was using the machine's button as bait. Beach Boy's hook makes its way through Mista's body towards his brain. Mista has sex pistols find Pesci and shatter the ice he is using to keep cool and prevent the Grateful Dead's effect. Panicking, Pesci drops his grip on Mista and exposes his location, but a disguised prosciutto, having aged himself with his stand, launches a surprise attack on Mista and he instantly ages him before firing three bullets into his head, leaving him for dead.
Prosciutto and Pesci then head to the driver's cabin where they find Coco Jumbo. However, Mista is still alive thanks to his sex pistols stopping the bullets from penetrating his skull, and he sends pistol number 6 to deliver an ice cube to Bacciarati. This allows Bacciarati to launch a counterattack against Prosciutto however, his movements warm him up and increase the aging effect. Prosciutto grabs him, but Bacciarati quickly zips open the cabin and drags both himself and Prosciutto off the moving train to protect his crew. Pesci catches Prosciutto with Beach Boy's line, but Bacciarati uses the opportunity to grab onto the line himself and knock Prosciutto off the train. However, Prosciutto survives and gets caught under the train's carriage, causing the Grateful Dead to remain in effect. As Bacciarati makes his way back on board the train, Pesci becomes emboldened by Prosciutto's sacrifice, shedding his cowardice and becoming ruthless. Pesci has Beach Boy travel through Bacciarati's body in an attempt to pierce his heart. In order to save himself, Bacciarati remains still and uses sticky fingers to split himself up into pieces, even splitting his heart in half, so that Pesci can't find him. Giving up on his search, Pesci stops the train, giving Bacciarati time to revive himself and piece himself back together. Bacciarati emerges from the stop train and faces Pesci. While the latter nearly manages to pierce Bacciarati's heart, Sticky Fingers grabs Beach Boy's line and uses it to twist Pesci's neck. In his last moments, Pesci attempts to crush Coco Jumbo with the crew still inside, but Bacciarati stops him by unzipping his own arm so it can punch Pesci, then finishes him off by zipping him into pieces. Prosciutto also succumbs to his wounds and dies, causing everyone to revert to normal. In the aftermath of the fight, Bacciarati discovers that Trish has stand powers she is unaware of and the team is soon trailed by their next opponent, Meloni. Meloni finds a sample of Bacciarati's blood on the train and using his stand baby face and the genetic information of a woman on the train, he spawns a remote-controlled baby stand. Bacciarati's crew stop on the roadside and prepare to steal a car while Babyface Jr. tracks them down on Maloney's motorcycle using Bacciarati's DNA. Using its ability to chop up and reconstruct humans, Babyface Jr. captures Bacciarati and Trish inside Coco Jumbo. To stop Giorno from telling the others, it begins removing parts of Giorno's body who then uses gold experience to replace the missing parts of his body and turns gold experience's hand into a piranha which attacks Baby Face Jr. from the inside. Giorno tricks him into merging with Meloni's motorcycle, then uses the spark plug to ignite the gasoline and cause an explosion, destroying him and returning Bacciarati and Trish to normal. He then uses Baby Face Jr.'s components to create a poisonous snake which tracks down and kills Meloni. Bacciarati's gang then finds instructions to use Moody Blues to receive the boss's final orders. Moody Blues transforms into Pericolo who, having been speaking to no one, had planned this method to ensure the orders couldn't be intercepted. Pericolo said to recover a data disk at Venice Station which contains further instructions, then killed himself to keep the information secret. Giorno and Mista drive towards Venice while the others remain in Coco Jumbo, however, Giacho, another Hitman team member, catches up with their car and attacks them using the freezing ability of his stand white album. They manage to shake him off by combining their stand's abilities, but Giacho catches up again and uses his stand as both armor and ice skates. In a desperate move to defeat Giacho, Giorno drives their car into a canal. White album's ice surrounds the car in the canal, but Giorno manages to transform some car parts into grass for Mista to use as a makeshift snowboard. Giacho attempts to stop him by temporarily unfreezing the canal, but Giorno reverts the grass into car parts again so that Mista can fire a metal projectile into Giacho's forehead. However, Giacho's armor is bulletproof, excepting a small breathing hole on the back of his neck. Mista attempts to shoot into the hole, but Giacho uses an ability he calls White Album gently weeps to freeze parts of the air solid, causing the bullet to ricochet until eventually hitting Mista's chest. Giacho finds a statue which contains the data disk and shatters it. Giorno inspires Mista to allow himself to be shot by his own ricocheting bullets, this allows him to use his blood to block Giacho's vision and force him onto a broken lamppost, impaling him through the neck. Giacho attempts to protect himself by freezing his blood while also reflecting a bullet towards Mista's head, but Giorno steps in, immediately heals Mista's wound.
and forces Giacho further onto the metal with repeated kicks, killing him, then heals Mista's injuries. Bucciarati's crew arrives in Venice and read the final mission from the boss on the data disc. The instructions are for only one person to take Trish to the top of the bell tower of the church on the island of San Giorgio Maggiore. Bucciarati takes Trish ashore, but also wears one of Giorno's ladybug brooches as a tracking device while the others wait in their speedboat. Bucciarati and Trish ascend in the tower's elevator. But when they arrive at the top, Bucciarati discovers that Trish has disappeared and that he is only holding her severed hand. Bucciarati has a flashback to his youth when he first joined Passione and realizes that the boss intends to kill his daughter to protect his own identity. Bucciarati follows the boss and manages to attach Giorno's ladybug tracker to him before he detects the boss and reconnects Trish's hand, but the boss uses his stand King Crimson to erase time and effortlessly avoid Bucciarati's attacks. Having appeared behind Bucciarati, King Crimson pushes his fist all the way through Bucciarati's chest in an attempt to kill him. Back on the boat, Bucciarati's crew wait for their leader while Giorno tracks the boss by following the ladybug. However, Giorno realizes that the group is experiencing erase time, with none of them remembering what had happened in between. Meanwhile, inside the church, Bucciarati lies bleeding from King Crimson's attack. Just as the boss is about to kill Trish, he is suddenly encased within a turtle made by Giorno's gold experience that replicates Coco Jumbo's stand ability. Bucciarati drops the turtle through the floor into an underground stream. However, King Crimson quickly reappears and prepares to attack again. But Bucciarati uses his remaining energy to grab Trish and use sticky fingers to lift them both to the floor above. Giorno finds them and heals Bucciarati, while Bucciarati's body appears to be deceased for a few seconds, he eventually begins moving again. Giorno signals the others, who arrive before King Crimson can reach Giorno and Bucciarati. The boss determines that he cannot fight them all without revealing his identity and decides to withdraw, allowing them to escape with Trish. On the dock, Bucciarati pierces his hand on a metal spike but doesn't react in pain, confusing Giorno. Bucciarati explains his decision to protect Trish, and gives his crew the choice of following him or the organization. One by one they join him, with the exception of Fugo. While Bucciarati's remaining crew stops for lunch, Narancia accidentally splashes red wine onto a man's white suit. When the man demands compensation, the paranoid crew members think he is an enemy and savagely beat him up. Meanwhile, Trish reveals that her father's origins are in Sardinia and they decide to travel there after leaving Venice. While eating, Narancia finds the metallic fish stand clash in his soup, it suddenly attacks him, biting off his tongue and rendering him speechless. He sees that Clash is able to teleport between nearby bodies of liquid, but he is unable to warn the others. After Giorno replaces Narancia's tongue, Narancia starts giving them false information, forced to do so by the stand talking head which has latched itself onto the base of his new tongue. The group are observed from afar by Squalo and Tiziano, Clash and talking heads respective users and members of the boss's elite guard squad. While the others try to figure out what is happening with Narancia. He directs them into a washroom where he tries to remove all traces of liquid, even his blood, to stop Clash from reappearing. Just as the others leave the room, a leaking pipe enables Clash to emerge from a puddle on the floor and attack Giorno, biting him on the neck. Squalo uses Clash to teleport Giorno to various water sources, making it difficult for Narancia to keep up. Giorno allows Narancia to shoot him with Aerosmith so the gun residue can make it easier to track Clash allowing Narancia to wound Squalo. Squalo and Tiziano get the upper hand by using Narancia to lead the rest of Bucciarati's crew into a kitchen with a gas leak and forcing Narancia to tell Mista to shoot with sex pistols, causing an explosion. With the rest of the crew incapacitated, Narancia runs into the streets to track down Squalo and Tiziano by himself. He cuts out his own tongue containing talking head and replaces it with one of Giorno's ladybug brooches, causing Tiziano to panic and drastically change his breathing patterns. This allows Narancia to locate and open fire on him with Aerosmith. Tiziano sacrifices himself to give Squalo a chance to attack by providing a nearby body of liquid for Clash to teleport to being his blood. Squalo has Clash bite Narancia's throat, but the latter withstands Clash's attack and kills Squalo too. 
With the two enforcers defeated, Bucciarati's crew head out of the Venice canals towards the airport to catch a plane to Sardinia. The group manages to secure an airplane after escaping Venice, with Abaccio using Moody Blues to fly the plane by replaying its pilot. As they prepare to leave, a hostile stand user named Karn approaches them on the runway, but Mista shoots and kills him and during the flight, Giorno discovers that Karn stand notorious B.I.G., a flesh-eating blob, has activated after his death and has attached itself to Giorno's right arm. Mista shoots Giorno's arm off, but notorious B.I.G., which tracks its foes by their movement and then absorbs their energy, attacks the sex pistols, severely injuring Mista. Narancia attacks with Aerosmith, but he too is targeted and injured by Notorious B.I.G., deeming it to be indestructible. Giorno forces it to latch onto his remaining left arm, then manages to dispose of it by severing his arm and sending it out of the plane. Since gold experience's powers come from its fists, Giorno can neither fight nor heal the wounds of himself. Mista or Narancia. Bacciarati relays the attack to Abaccio and takes the wounded inside the turtle. Alone, Trish is approached by Notorious B.I.G., which was chasing the quickest moving object nearby, that being the plane itself. The stand doesn't pursue her when she remains still, instead approaching one of Giorno's throbbing brooches, which is in the process of transforming into one of Giorno's hands. Trish realizes that Giorno had created a brooch replicating one of his hands before cutting his arm off, which when attached could allow him, Mista and Narancia to recover. Trish tries to acquire Giorno's brooch without attracting Notorious B.I.G., but it attacks her. Trish unintentionally awakens her stand Spice Girl, who explains that it has the ability to make any surface softer and rubber-like. Spice Girl tricks Notorious into repeatedly attacking a ticking clock that it renders elastic, making it indestructible. While it's distracted, Spice Girl slowly but firmly pierces the stand with a pipe, causing it to evaporate. Finally safe, Trish returns to the cockpit and informs Bacciarati of Notorious B.I.G.'s attack, but a portion of it managed to travel through the wall and attack the engine in the rear of the plane causing it to grow massive and fill up half of the interior of the airplane. Trish uses Spice Girl to turn the cockpit of the plane into a makeshift parachute while Notorious and the rest of the airplane crash into the Tyrrhenian Sea. Notorious B.I.G. remains trapped in the ocean due to the constantly moving waves, and thanks to Giorno's hand in his brooch, Giorno is able to heal himself and the others, and they arrive on Sardinia undetected. However, the boss senses that they survived and that Trish has awakened her stand, fearing that she may recall her youth at Costa Smeralda. He decides to travel to Sardinia alone to prevent anyone from discovering his identity. In the summer of 1965, a Sardinian woman in an Italian prison gave birth to a boy which was then taken in by the church under the care of a friendly priest. One night the priest found the boy's mother underneath concrete at the church, buried but still alive, and deemed that she had been there for years. The boy caught the priest in the act and soon after, the entire village burned down as the list of the dead included the priest and the boy. In the present on Sardinia, the boy, still a teenager years later, encounters a mysterious fortune teller. The man determines that the boy is looking for his 15-year-old daughter, but is confused due to his own apparent age. The fortune teller then begs to see the boy's palm to read deeper into his fortune until he suddenly snaps and physically transforms into an adult. Grabbing the fortune teller by the throat who realizes that he has two personalities, light and dark, with the older personality in truth being Passion's boss. From a photograph, the fortune teller predicts the boss will soon meet the traitor Risotto Nero, the leader of the Hitman team. King Crimson then appears, swiftly executing the fortune teller. The boss reverts to the teenager, named Dapio, who travels to Costa Smeralda and when the boss needs to speak to and control Dapio, he hallucinates a phone ringing and speaks through miscellaneous objects, believing them to be cell phones. Dapio is discovered by Risotto, who realizes that he is a stand user when he reacts to the sound of Aerosmith scouting the area, which signifies the arrival of Bacciarati's team. Risotto uses his stand Metallica to create razor blades and steel needles which puncture Dapio from the inside out. While Risotto prepares another attack, the boss calls Dapio and tells him to get within 2 meters of Risotto, which will allow him to swiftly take control of their shared body and kill Risotto with King Crimson before he can discover his true identity. 
In order to help with this, the boss lends Dapio a portion of his power, which he calls Epitaph to predict Risotto's movements by glancing 10 seconds into the future. With Epitaph's power, Dapio sees a vision of a pair of scissors piercing out of his throat. Unable to avoid this from happening, Dapio quickly clasps his throat and removes the scissors. He deduces Risotto's ability to transform the iron in his body into metallic objects, as well as the ability for Risotto to cloak his own visibility with iron. Next, Dapio sees a vision of a severed foot and, sensing Risotto's direction, throws the scissors and cuts off Risotto's foot. Risotto, now aware of Dapio's precognitive abilities, reattaches his severed foot with metal staples while noting Dapio's two different personalities. Risotto presses his attack, transforming more iron from Dapio's body into objects, the loss of iron from his body not only weakens Dapio, but it also reduces his body's ability to absorb oxygen, leaving him short of breath. Risotto prepares to finish off Dapio, slowly coming to the realization of the identity of Dapio's second personality. However, scalpels that Dapio had earlier attempted to throw at Risotto ended up flying in the direction of Bacciarati's group attracting their attention. Risotto is suddenly shot from behind by Aerosmith, which can only detect his breathing. The boss takes control of Dapio's body and explains his plan to Risotto. Fatally wounded, he realizes that Dapio's other personality is the boss and uses his last bit of strength to grab the boss and attempt to trick Aerosmith into shooting the both of them, but King Crimson erases the time in which the bullets were shot to avoid them, killing Risotto. The boss eats a nearby frog to regain some iron as Bacciarati and Narancia head to the scene of the battle. Abaccio uses Moody Blues to search through the past on the Costa Smeralda beach, trying to recreate the boss's face. Bacciarati and Narancia see Risotto's corpse, then unexpectedly find a young boy tied behind a rock and missing blood, with his lips sewn together. Back on the beach, Abaccio is distracted by a group of young soccer players trying to retrieve their ball from a tree. When he goes to help them, he is mortally wounded by the boss, who impersonated one of the young boys. In the afterlife, Abaccio reunites with his deceased partner from the police force, who commends him for his diligence in helping his friends. When Bacciarati's group come across Abaccio's corpse, Giorno discovers that just before Moody Blues disappeared forever. Abaccio used it to successfully recreate a death mask of the boss's face in a nearby stone pillar. Bacciarati and Giorno search police and Interpol databases for a face that matches the one that Abaccio created, without success. However, a voice within their laptop informs them that the boss's name is Diavolo and that King Crimson is unbeatable, except possibly by using a stand arrow which they can collect from the voice's owner in Rome. The voice tells them the history of the stand arrows, they were created from a meteorite which crashed in Greenland and House of Virus which kills most but gives people superhuman abilities if they survive its effects. Convinced the offer is genuine, Bacciarati agrees to meet the person behind the voice at the Colosseum. Meanwhile, Diavolo reluctantly orders Dapio to send Sayakalata and Seko, the sadistic remaining members of his elite guard, after Bacciarati's team. As soon as the team arrives on the Italian mainland, they are ambushed by Sayakalata and Seko. Sayakalata uses his stand, Green Day, to spread a deadly mold around the area. Giorno realizes that it activates and infects people when they descend to a lower altitude. So Mista blows up the boat's fuel tanks, throwing the team upwards onto the shore. Bacciarati sends the mold-affected Narancia back into the turtle to be healed by Giorno as he and Mista begin making their way up into the village to escape Sayakalata's deadly mold. As they climb upwards out of Green Day's range, Seko ambushes them with his stand oasis, which allows him to swim through and soften solid ground. Seko's attack threatens to pull the group down and trigger Green Day, so Bacciarati jumps off a ledge and ambushes him, who is surprised that Bacciarati is not affected by the mold as it should attack all living things. Bacciarati's team manages to escape in a car and drive towards Rome, but on the way Giorno notices that Bacciarati has a hole in his wrist. His skin is cold and that he has no pulse. Bacciarati reveals that although Giorno brought him back to life, he had already died and he is only still moving due to Gold Experience's ability, and that he has accepted his fate. Arriving in Rome, the group is ambushed by Sayakalata and Seko again, this time from a helicopter which spreads Green Day's mold over the city. 
Seko drops down into the ground to attack them once more. Giorno and Mista shoot a building with gold experience infused bullets which sprout roots to grab and keep the helicopter in place. He and Mista then climb the roots to pursue Sayakalata while Bacciarati prepares to deal with Seko. While making light of Seko's poor verbal skills, Bacciarati is suddenly overwhelmed by the punches of Seko, who rebounds his fists from the ground to increase his speed and power. Giorno and Mista climb the building holding Sayakalata's helicopter, but when Mista fires sex pistols inside, they cannot find Sayakalata and instead they and Mista are wounded. Giorno and Pistol No. 5 enter the helicopter but Sayakalata has surgically separated his body into pieces, which are able to stay living thanks to Green Day's mold. Sayakalata attacks Giorno, trying to force him downwards and trigger the mold. Giorno manages to launch one of Mista's bullets into Sayakalata's head and he apparently falls dead, but Giorno suspects that he is faking. Sayakalata sits up and announces that his severed arm is ready to kill Mista. However, the bullet Giorno shot into Sayakalata's head transforms into a beetle which chews through his skull. Giorno uses gold experience to viciously pummel Sayakalata to death and send his body flying into a garbage truck. Underground, Seko calls Sayakalata on his cell phone, but he does not answer. Seko then notices and listens to a voice message from Sayakalata stating that they are invincible and that he loves Seko. As Seko again prepares to attack Bacciarati, the scene is being watched through binoculars from a man in the Colosseum. Because of his stand superior speed, Seko severely injures Bacciarati, who decides to flee. Seko then receives a final voice message from Sayakalata, who informs him that Bacciarati's group intend to meet someone in the Colosseum who has a plan to beat the boss. The mysterious man is revealed to be Jean-Pierre Polnareff, who has one of the stand arrows but is now missing many of his body parts and is confined to a wheelchair. Bacciarati uses sticky fingers to escape underground towards the Colosseum, but Seko tracks him using his highly sensitive hearing. Seko forces Bacciarati out of the ground by creating a rain of stone spikes, but Bacciarati bursts a nearby car tire to pop Seko's eardrums. Panicking, Seko grabs a nearby boy, who coincidentally happens to be Dapio, intending to use him as a hostage to escape. However, Bacciarati uses sticky fingers to harmlessly punch through Dapio and unzip Seko's neck. Struggling to save himself, Seko stumbles into the garbage truck containing Sayakalata's body as it drives away. Meanwhile, Bacciarati's body starts falling apart from the damage it has sustained, and Dapio prepares to kill him. Rather than kill Bacciarati, Diavolo has Dapio use him to find out who he is planning to meet. He helps Bacciarati across the road to the Colosseum, but stops when he spots Mista and realizes that his team is nearby. Diavolo calls Dapio and tells him that Bacciarati's body is actually dead and that, due to his sight and hearing now failing him, he is only able to sense the souls inside people. Diavolo disguises Dapio's soul as Trisha's to deceive Bacciarati. After they reach the Colosseum, Dapio and Bacciarati encounter Polnareff, who Diavolo recognizes. Years earlier, Diavolo had unearthed six stand arrows in Egypt, keeping one and selling the rest to Inyava. He then used the power of the stand arrow to build his criminal organization. He was tracked down by Polnareff and the two battled, the victorious Diavolo leaving Polnareff's broken body for dead. Back in the Colosseum, Diavolo takes control of his and Dapio's shared body, abandons Bacciarati, and makes his way towards Polnareff. Though Polnareff has created a method to track King Crimson's erase time by cutting himself and counting the number of blood drops, King Crimson still gains the upper hand, punching through Polnareff. Diavolo recovers the arrow, but not before Polnareff uses it to pierce his own stand, Silver Chariot, transforming it into a new stand which appears as a shadowy figure. The figure takes the stand arrow from Diavolo and causes everyone in Rome to fall asleep. As Bacciarati's team awakens, they awkwardly discover that they've switched bodies with those that were closest in proximity to them, with Giorno swapping with Narancia and Mista with Trish. After the initial shock, they find that they can still control their own stands, although they are unaware of who inhabits Bacciarati's unconscious body. Meanwhile, Palmareff's soul has transferred into the turtle, Coco Jumbo. 
He explains that his former Stan Silver Chariot holds the arrow and that it has become Chariot Requiem, which causes souls to switch bodies. He tells them that he is unable to control this stand and that their only option to defeat Diavolo is to retrieve the arrow from Chariot Requiem. He also warns them of Dapio, though he is unsure of his relationship to Diavolo. At the Colosseum's entrance, the group sees Diavolo charging towards Chariot Requiem. However, after he summons Sticky Fingers to cut off Chariot Requiem's arm, realize that Bacciarati is inside Diavolo's body. Members of the group attempt to retrieve the arrow but they discover that Chariot Requiem has the ability to turn their stands against them. Bacciarati orders Mista to shoot his still unconscious body, assuming it is possessed by Diavolo. However, shortly afterwards they experience time erasure during which Diavolo uses King Crimson to impale Giorno's body containing Narancia on broken iron bars. Although Giorno is able to heal the wounds on his own body, he is unable to save Narancia who has already died, and his soul re-enters his own body. Because Diavolo is active, Polnareff deduces that he has two personalities and that Dapio's soul must be inside Bacciarati's body while Diavolo's soul is inside someone else's. The group then chase after Chariot Requiem, after catching up to it, Bacciarati trips the stand, which drops the arrow and walks on without it. Polnareff, no longer being a stand user, is able to grab it without being attacked back, though doing so attracts Chariot Requiem's attention. Dapio dies in Bacciarati's bullet-riddled body feeling lonely and abandoned. Meanwhile, Chariot Requiem races towards Polnareff, but when Mista tries to shoot it, his gun suddenly breaks apart. Chariot Requiem retrieves the arrow and walks off, however, its additional ability takes effect, mutating the bodies of organisms nearby. Inspecting Mista's broken gun and determining that Diavolo destroyed it during a race time, Giorno deduces that Diavolo must be hiding within the body of someone in the group and plans to touch each of them with gold experience to detect Diavolo's soul. Mista refuses, fearing Diavolo could be inside Giorno's body, so Bacciarati agrees to go first. As Giorno moves to check Bacciarati, King Crimson suddenly appears from Mista's body and swiftly severs Giorno's arm. When Trish summons Spice Girl in retaliation, King Crimson grabs hold of her stand, using it to control Mista's body. Diavolo concludes that Chariot Requiem is effectively the shadow of one's own soul, cast by a light source it generates behind each of their heads. He destroys the light source behind King Crimson's head, dissipating Chariot Requiem and allowing him to obtain the arrow. Giorno converts the drops of his blood on King Crimson's hand into a colony of ants which chew through the arrow's shaft so the arrowhead falls to the ground. When King Crimson tries to pick it up, Trish uses Spice Girl to knock the arrow back towards the group. King Crimson then ruthlessly punches through Spice Girl, using the force to propel Mista's body, and himself, towards the arrow. Diavolo attempts to grab the arrow with King Crimson, but Bacciarati destroys Chariot Requiem, returning everybody's souls to their respective bodies. However, with his body already dead, Bacciarati's soul begins to ascend to the heavens. Before departing, he thanks Giorno for making him feel alive again when they met and leaves the arrow in his hands. Diavolo contemplates escaping after seeing Giorno with the arrow. But when Trish reveals her father's intention to flee, he has a change of heart, believing he is entitled to be king and that he should have no reason to run away. Giorno pierces gold experience with the arrow, apparently damaging gold experience, Diavolo takes advantage of this and attacks Giorno to reclaim the arrow, shattering gold experience's face. However, Diavolo's attack doesn't harm him, instead, gold experience absorbs the arrow into its body and sheds its skin like a shell revealing its new form as gold experience requiem. After using Epitaph to witness a vision of himself defeating Giorno, Diavolo uses King Crimson to erase time and attack Giorno, however, Gold Experience Requiem uses its power to nullify his attack, rewinding time to the point of King Crimson's activation and with Diavolo confused and unable to fight back, Gold Experience Requiem viciously pummels him. Mortally wounded, Diavolo falls into the river. Trish urges Giorno to look for him but Giorno claims that it won't be necessary. Diavolo attempts to crawl into a tunnel but is fatally stabbed by a homeless man who is under the influence of the drugs that Diavolo sells. When Diavolo awakens, he finds himself on an operating table, unable to move before a woman walks in and announces she will perform an autopsy.
When she attempts to saw off his arm, Diavolo dies again of shock and awakens on a street side in the city. As Diavolo begins to realize what is happening, a dog barks at him, startling him and causing him to fall into the street where he is run over and killed by a car. Meanwhile, Giorno explains to Trish and Mista that the power of gold experience Requiem has doomed Diavolo to die over and over for all eternity. In a flashback to before Bucciarati and the others meet Giorno, a florist approaches Bucciarati and asks him to avenge his daughter. She apparently committed suicide, but he believes that she was killed by her boyfriend, a sculptor named Scalippi. On the way to interrogate the sculptor, Mista sees some strange round stones and upon meeting him, Mista realizes Scalippi is a stand user after finding another stone next to him sculpted in the form of Bucciarati at the moment of his death. Mista tries to force the truth from Scalippi, who explains that his stand rolling stones create stones with images of people at the moment of their deaths. Once a person touches their own stone, they are allowed to choose to accept their death. He affirms that after the florist's daughter touched her stone, she realized that she was about to die and committed suicide to allow her organs to be transplanted into her ailing father and save his life. Upon learning this, Mista tries his best to prevent Bucciarati from touching his own stone, almost killing himself in the process. Back in the present, Giorno and the others learn that, despite his body being dead, Palnareff managed to keep his soul attached to the turtle, which Giorno decides to keep the arrow inside for safekeeping. As the battle is over, Giorno is being watched by Mista and Palnareff as he is instated as the new leader of Passione. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video, then consider dropping a like as well as subscribe for more content every week, and comment to let me know which show would you like me to recap. If you want to support me and my channel, check out my Ko-Fi page for more content and my merch store, Anime Bonfire for shirts and hoodies, and I will see you guys in the next video.